We used to have the humiliation of being considered the weak people of Southeast Asia. So for a long time since the establishment of New China, people have tried hard to change that situation and to win lots of medals in the Olympic Games. The Chinese quest for Olympic gold is nothing if not determined. Potential stars are spotted young and trained intensively. It means sacrifices, but it gets results. In the UK, we've poured millions into our quest for gold with little return. What can we learn from the Chinese? China, ordinary secondary schools are simply vast, with roles of 5,000 pupils common. Their network of sports colleges, this one's in Shanghai, are tiny by comparison. Just 500 students, but every single one hand-picked. They recognised some time ago that, that um, China was not doing well internationally, so they have designed a programme which helps to identify and bring on those talented individuals in its nation. Students are recommended by sports schools at district level. That is a lower level compared to us. Then they have to pass a severe test of their physical condition as well as an academic test. And after that, we select the best of them. Their one in purpose is to identify, nurture, and bring sporting talent to its fruition. The schedule at these colleges is punishing. The programs are very precise. The training regimes are extremely tough, and the children are of a very high quality. Many of them will go on to compete nationally and a number of them will compete internationally. Some of them may well make the Beijing or the London Olympics. Those are the specific targets set for the specialist sports colleges. To help them cope with this regime, students board at these schools where they sleep six or eight to a room in large dormitory blocks. They go home about once a month and continue to train at the colleges during holidays. We have 250 students boarded here. We offer it for two reasons. We want to strengthen our control and management of the excellent sports students to ensure they can get good training as well as a good daily routine. We like students to board for better management of their daily schedule, so they can have enough time for sports training as well as lessons. And their recovery time can be guaranteed, and they can get a massage and sauna in our research center. If they go home and back to school every day, I'm afraid time cannot be guaranteed, especially for young children who still have no idea how to arrange a daily schedule. You can get the situation where a footballer um, at secondary school level uh, plays for a school. He might also play for the county uh, at representative level. He will also almost inevitably belong to a local club and he'll get pulled in that direction as well. And there's often this conflict between the desires of the various people who have a claim to him. Under the Chinese system, particularly when they go to the specialist sports college, there's one coach responsible for them. The path to one of these colleges may begin at primary, where specialist PE teachers are on the lookout for talent. These eight-year-olds come to this college after school and do two hours training six days a week. Oh, 
The next step is a school that offers specialist training in their sport, like this one in Jiangsu province, which specialises in volleyball. The coaches are always on the hunt for youngsters with the right physical attributes. We have a scientific way of selection. First we look at the height of a pupil and see if she is good at volleyball, and then we will see her parents' height to ensure she will go to the standard height of a volleyball player. They look at their arm and leg length, and if they consider the children are suitable and are likely to make progress, then they can have a place at the school. Height is so important that not actually playing volleyball won't hinder your chances if you're sufficiently tall. We will choose a girl if she is tall in height but not playing volleyball at the time. We would pick her and give her a trial to see if she can be suitable as a volleyball player. Team players are then taught together as a group in junior high school. They actually are in the same teaching group for the whole of their time. I'm sure this establishes all sorts of group patterns of behaviour, so they feel a very tightly knit group. The next step is a specialist sports college where students sit an entrance exam and undergo a series of medical tests to see if they have the physical potential to reach the top. Lower level schools will recommend their best students for us. We will look at their skills as well as their potential and our researchers take care of physical characteristics like height and weight. If a student cannot achieve the expected score in the academic test but he is really good at sports, we will try our best to enrol him and offer personal tutors to him because it's really not easy to find real talent in sports, so we don't want to give him up. The academic curriculum is especially tailored for the students. For the major subjects, Chinese, maths and English, we use the municipal curriculum of Shanghai. For other subjects, we have sports specialised material for senior students. As for the amount of time they spend, their emphasis is the major subjects, but we do allow them to lag a bit in minor subjects, like biology, physics and chemistry. They have their own textbooks, which are specifically designed for the 4,000 sports colleges. So when they do physics, they'll cover the same concepts as they would in any other school. However, the examples they draw from and use are related to sport. The same applies for maths and for other subjects. So basically, the teaching materials help the children to not only learn the specific subjects, but to improve their knowledge and expertise in the area of sport, physical activity and fitness. And I found that fascinating. But what these colleges are all about is this. The sports training. The primacy of sport is reflected in the staffing. This principal has 460 students, selected from a population of 7 million in Nanjing. They do six Olympic sports. We have 73 teachers, 38 of them are trainers and sports specialist teachers, and 35 are academic. The schools focus on Olympic disciplines, and students are trusted to do sports which you'd be unlikely to find in schools in the UK. You would not go into any secondary school in England and see free weights being lifted individually by students without somebody in very close proximity to make sure that there were not going to be no problems with it. <laughs> Similarly, uh, in another school in Suzhou, um, I saw shooting being taught in school. And again, one couldn't imagine a shooting range in a secondary school in England. 
and having a tight-knit group of athletes from the same sport, all under one roof, has other advantages, according to Paul. The fact that you're able to have a high-quality coach who has a stable of high jumpers, all of the same high standard, must help the fact that they're working with a number of others who have equal ability must be, prove advantageous to each individual high jumper. In the UK, to get those sorts of numbers together, you would only do that on a very rare occasions when you brought them to a centre together, but you certainly wouldn't have those sorts of numbers in an individual school. Every training area features the Chinese flag, and national pride is instilled in the students. I hope I can be the champion of an international competition and win honour for our country. I hope one day to stand on the stage of a big competition and give my best for my country. I was very well taught by the coach and my teachers, so I would like to express my gratitude to this school. I hope I can win honour for our school. On the day we filmed, the coach for these ten-year-olds was off sick, but their discipline was impeccable. There was no larking about, and their concentration was unbroken. But sustained improvement in their chosen sport is expected. Students are tested annually, and some don't make the grade. When it comes to academic work, we hope they can achieve 70% compared to schools of a similar level. But for sports, we want them to reach 100%. There is an annual test of physical condition, and if they can't achieve that, I have to say sorry to him. <coughs> the students all come here to become the best in the country, but the truth hurts. The fact is, there is only one gold medal and one champion. We have about 500 students, but only a very small percentage of them can become professional sportsmen. <laughs> and sporting achievement is what it's all about. Those now studying here are preparing themselves for the 2012 Olympics in London, so we are now trying our best to get our students prepared for that level of competition. PE teachers in the UK may not be as comfortable as the Chinese with the idea of packing talented children off to specialist boarding schools. And culturally, there's clearly a huge difference between the two countries. Chinese parents are honoured if their children are chosen. British parents may find it harder to sacrifice ordinary family life. But the Chinese system works, both in sporting and academic terms. We'll never adopt their ideas wholesale, but it may be time to reconsider how we cater for our gifted and talented sporting students.